What's up guys, Matt Beck from Free Salon Education. I got another video for you guys. I stopped into the salon and I wanted to put together a haircut really quick so that I'm consistently putting out haircuts for you. But now I'm outside because the salon is packed and busy and uh, so I can't film this intro in there. But I got a great step-by-step -step haircut. Here is the end result. Um, it's an asymmetrical cut. It's a little bit windy around here. Let me get up against the brick wall uh, so you guys can see. So asymmetrical cut. Um, really hard lines into the back, round layering, and uh, it gets longer in the front. We did a lot of dry cutting techniques, so I think that you guys will take a lot from this cut. I did do one similar to this, but definitely the technique is a lot different. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoy this haircut. Please leave in the comments. Let me know once again. I love getting the comments and the feedback and what you guys want to see next. So uh, thanks for checking out the video. Here we go with our step-by-step -step haircut. All right, so we're gonna start off the haircut using a right-hand side parting, and then I'm gonna draw a diagonal forward parting from mid-crown down to just above the ear. Then I'm gonna continue that diagonal forward line to the opposite side of the head, just above the ear as well. So it's basically like creating a horseshoe shape around the top of the head going through mid-crown. Then I'm gonna draw a triangle shape in the back of the head sitting right at the crown, and then the point of the triangle should end right about the occipital bone in the center back of the head. All right, now I'm just gonna twist it up, clip it away, and uh, one last little section, we're gonna do a diagonal forward line from that triangle, from the point of that triangle to behind the ear. Um, that will section off what we're gonna use as our triangular graduation later. So I really wanted to keep that, that kind of diagonal back line that's, that's going across the back of the head as my round graduation shape and then we have that small triangle or that small square for our triangular shape later on. You'll understand what I mean in a couple minutes. Uh, so we're gonna start off our round graduation. This, my finger angle is shifted towards me just a little bit. I wanted to preserve a little bit of extra length right behind the ear to start off because we're gonna square off that line across the ear, which you saw at the beginning. Um, so as I continue through uh, working diagonal back, I'm creating a rounded shape in the back of the head, uh, following the round of the head, but I'm using a stationary guide to keep a nice heavy weight line. The thing I love about this haircut that you saw at the beginning is that it has that heavy weight line so you get to really see the shape that we created. Um, and then I just keep that same finger angle working all the way through the back, which allows me to uh, continue it and then end up in a triangular graduation feel because of the over direction of the hair. The thing I love about cutting asymmetry this way is that I'm doing, I'm putting a little extra weight, probably weight that I don't quite need uh, over to the left hand side by over directing everything that far. But the great thing about that is I can always go through in the dry cut and cut some of it out and draw different lines with it. So that's what you're gonna see me do when we blow it dry is I will remove some of that weight. All right, now just keeping the consistency. I think that's the, the biggest thing here. Don't take too much hair. You'll notice that I took little sections, even though this was a stationary guide and I could have taken all of it at once and cut it, I would not have had the same result because the more hair you try to cut at a time, the more pushing you get with the scissor blade. So you're not gonna have consistent lines in a haircut. Okay, so quickly I wanna discuss my thoughts on over direction. So when we look at the head shape, I look at it in different corners. The key thing here is, let's say corner number one is directly behind the head, uh, directly center back. Corner number two is in between center back and behind the ear. Corner number three is behind the ear. The reason I look at the head shape in corners is if you pass hair, if you try to over direct hair past two corners, what you're going to end up with is lifeless, heavy hair. So with this rule, anytime I'm on the head shape, I always look at it. You could look at it like a clock. You can look at it however you want, but you don't want to pass the hair past two corners unless you're doing it for some other purpose. Uh, but let's just say for uh, a flattering result, um, I don't want to over direct the hair past two corners. Now, as you see in this haircut, when I'm over directing the hair back, I'm over directing it from uh, corner number three to corner number one. This is a pretty extreme over direction. You can see how much weight it pushes forward, but I keep working my way through. Then as I get to the opposite side, what's going to happen is if I kept over directing the hair to that point, the hair is just going to turn into be very, very heavy. So just keep that in mind. 
Now we're finishing up the left hand side of the head, keeping that over direction, keeping that consistency, keeping our elevation nice and low. Now that triangle that we sectioned off in the back, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue through that cutting around graduated shape. The only difference in this part of the haircut is that the elevation will be a little bit higher because I wanna build that shape up. I already built my strong line through the base of the haircut. So now I'm just lightening it up because if I brought all that down to one length, it would be way too heavy uh, of a shape for my liking. Uh, but if you guys wanted to build up extra weight down there, you, op you absolutely could do that as well. Um, but you can see continuing that over direction, it will turn into a triangular shape as I keep moving through. Uh, but just quickly going through, nice little high elevation, uh, pretty much creating a 45 degree angle at that point. You'll see that 45 de degree angle come to life right here because I'm gonna use that as my guideline. So what I just cut uh, and then what I cut at the very beginning of the haircut becomes my guide. And I'm gonna go through with a slight diagonal forward um, parting of the hair and keeping my fingers parallel to the parting. And working my way through creating a 45 degree angle, nice round shape uh, on the right hand side of the head. This is now a traveling guide, so I am allowing that uh, weight to kind of move with me. And then once I get to the very end of this section, I will be over directing everything straight back. So we're gonna move, now we're at about mid-ear. Now at this point, I'm gonna cut my guideline to start my stationary guide. So everything will come back to that point. Keeping the stationary guide, um, it's really just, I like that it's going to kind of soften up the front. It's going to toss a little bit of weight around the cheekbone area uh, instead of squaring off the entire side of the haircut. I like to add just a little bit of a kick of weight into the front. So you can see how that kind of falls down. It also gives a little extra weight if she wants to brush it back. Um, now I'm going to go division point of the head from the high point or kind of mid crown down to behind the ear, over directing everything back again, uh, blending it with that 45 degree graduation that we created in the back. Uh, just swinging that hair around. Now, when we talked about weight and corners earlier, this is where we're breaking my rule of thought, but that's why we're gonna go into a ton of dry cutting techniques at the end. So we are passing this around pretty much every corner of the head once we get to that side of the haircut, but this is a little bit more of an extreme haircut as well, and you will notice that I am doing some extra elevation in there to help lighten up the weight load that's gonna happen as that hair swings around the head and falls. So uh, just, Keep in mind that flattering weight control is going to be the two corners, but if you want this extreme weight like you're seeing here, then you can pass it around as many corners as you want. But you're probably going to be doing some dry cutting uh, in it later. So quick flat wrap, um, and then we'll do some iron work. You can see how much weight is sitting on that side. What I love about this is you can see that, that great shape we created with the 45 degree angle on the right side. And the left side, you can see how heavy it is. We're gonna go in and do a ton of dry cutting techniques that I think you guys will like. It was my whole thought process on this haircut was to show you guys all these dry cutting techniques, so. Now that line work, you can see how it's kind of like a, a crazy line at the bottom there. That's because we elevated the hair. So we created more of a solid line in the back, but because we were elevating across the side of the head, now I'll go through with my dry cut, the point of my Mizutani Puffin, and create that nice solid line uh, throughout the side of the haircut. I love doing detail work with this scissor because the blade is so strong. It's perfect for dry cutting, and it really helps me create those lines. All right, so we're continuing into the back, outlining that shape. Um, I've talked about this quite a few times on my latest videos, but uh, using that point of the scissor just to draw out and outline your haircuts looks so good. I mean, you need to make sure that you have consistent shape within the interior of the haircut, but when you're working on the outside of the haircut, it just uh, kind of makes everything melt together. Uh, so here's my triangular shape that we were pushing forward earlier. So just going through with the tip of the scissor, creating that outline. Anytime you elevate hair, it diffuses the outline of the haircut. So 
in order to get those strong lines in there, you have to go through and detail it. Now we're gonna go in with a tease cutting technique. Thing I love most about this technique is it just removes so much weight and bulk and creates a, a lot of texture and movement in your haircuts. This can really make any like really strong shape have kind of a shattered effect to it with a lot of texture. It's definitely a trick that you wanna put into your bag of tricks that you have uh, for the salon. But uh, the way that we do that technique, it's a half open, half close. I'm doing the same thing with this slide cutting technique, just half closing the scissor. This is all with my Mizutani Puffin. It glides right through the hair. It's meant for dry cutting only, so uh, it's definitely a cool scissor for that. So all this slide cutting, tease cutting, all of it is a half open, half close of the scissor. Um, you're sliding the scissor into the hair, which will remove some of the hair, but not all of the hair, which will give you that texture and movement. Uh, more slide cutting through, just blending that shape. Again, we passed over multiple corners, which I talked about, so you're gonna have a lot of extra weight to work with. Now I'm gonna go through with a point cutting technique. Um, key thing here is that I grabbed the whole crown of the head, I started low, started point cutting, and as I'm point cutting, I'm sliding up the hair shaft, and that is creating texture throughout the entire crown of the haircut, which is really cool, gives it a really cool effect. Uh, same thing here, point cutting through, sliding my fingers out, and just working that point cutting technique. We'll do a little bit more. Key thing with my point cutting is that I have the stationary blade, that's what's hitting my finger, so you'll notice that my wrist is flipped. Some of you guys may cut with your point cutting the complete opposite direction. I would definitely encourage you to try it this way, because if your stationary blade is hitting your finger, you're less apt to cut yourself for sure. Now we're gonna go through with another point cutting technique. This is just over directing the hair towards myself and then working the same exact way, steady blade into the hair and just working back and forth through the section, removing bulk from the haircut. Again, we passed over those corners. We do have extra bulk we can mess around with, but it does create a lot of texture and that's what this haircut's all about. Uh, we're gonna do the same exact technique on this side. So we'll do a little bit of point cutting through there, just softening the edge. What I do is I lift horizontally where that little heavy ledge is on the haircut, then I go through and I point cut that section so it falls nice and soft. We'll finish up the outline of this haircut. There's that little bit of extra weight that we cut from the triangular part. And now we're gonna go through and do a little bit of no thumbs technique. If you guys wanna learn this technique, check out um, some of our past videos I've done and shown this step by step. I hope you guys like this haircut. You can definitely use a lot of these techniques every day in the salon. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit like, share with your friends, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.